Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you both. I'm Ariana. Hi, um, Ariana. Nice to meet you. Very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So let's start this off. Tell me a little bit about your characters. Sure. Um, well, this this show is set. Um, it's set in uh, Los Angeles in 1972, and it's about um, a feminist publisher uh, who teams up with like a, a porn publisher <laughs> to produce the first ever adult magazine for women. And I play the sister of Joyce, who's the the feminist publisher. And um, we grew up in Pasadena in a very like. Um, uh, like as Oscar said, one percent world, <laughs> um, country club world, and I am married and have three kids and a housewife, and so I am very encouraging of her to kind of go for this, and it's very titillating for me to think of her um, entering this this uh, this taboo world of of adult magazines. Yes, and I play a character named Richie who was a makeup artist at Bottom Dollar Productions. And before they did Minx, the uh, titular magazine based uh, obviously uh, on the show, um, is um, I exclusively work just makeup. I rouged a lot of nipples in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I was able to get the opportunity to photograph um, for Minx the magazine. Um, and yeah, in the show, I get to unleash this creative side of me that I've never been given the opportunity. Uh, Richie is Latinx, he's gay, he's proud, he wears tight clothing. <laughs> he's fabulous, he's incredible. What yeah, attracted my, you? Oh, I, was, sorry, I, was, I forgot to say my character is named Shelly. Yes, so yes. You know. <laughs> so what attracted you guys to the project? Oh my gosh, everything. <laughs> everything. I mean, it, it, it's a show that takes place in 1972, first of all. So, you know, Sign period pieces are legit the best.com. You know what I mean? Like, it's just <laughs> so, I, they're so, you know, because it's in the style of like, you know, one of the, like the best shows, you know, are like, you know, Mad Men and like mm -hmm. The Marvelous Mrs. Mm -hmm. Maisel. And like, we get to have a part, like just going back through time is incredible. The costumes alone, I'm just like, oh, I'm just fantasizing what I, what I get to wear on the <laughs> show. And also it's so, I mean, a show like Minx has, to my knowledge, has never been done before. And to be involved with a show that is like saying something and saying something quite big is exciting. And I just wanted a piece of that conversation. I just wanted a piece of that pie. Yeah. When I read the script, um, I just was like, this shit is funny. I was, I mean, it was literally one of the funniest scripts that I'd read in years. It was so tight. It felt very timely. It explored this world that I haven't seen on television, like Oscar said. And I, and the character that, you know, I, I'm in two scenes and that my character's in two scenes in the pilot. And I was like, I know who this woman is. I, I know how to make this funny. I I love the idea of her. Um, and yeah, I mean, from the get go, you could see how sharp Ellen's Ellen's comedy was, her timing. Um, and I was like, this is going to be this is going to be huge. This is, truly. And it's so funny, too, because like, you know, Len and I have read many, many pilots throughout our career. And like some pilots, you don't really get the tone of the show really in that first episode, because usually pilots, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of mm -hmm. like getting the plot along, like getting those characters yeah. across. But with Ellen's pilot, it was so clear what the tone was and what directions the characters were going in that it just felt, uh, to me, it was like, it stood out amongst all the pilots that I read that Yeah. Season. I think it really jumped it jumped off the page in a way that speaks to how she how she writes. For Absolutely. Sure. For sure. What I liked about the show, I saw the first five episodes, is that even though it's set 50 years ago, all of these topics and conversations and issues are going on right now. There's sexism, racism, homophobia, freedom of press. How what how was it like to act that out 50 years ago while dealing with it today and probably even in your career? And how would you like that to add to the current conversation? I mean, for me, 
yeah, I like like when I read the pilot, I was like, this is timely. This is very I mean, are we still talking about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's it's definitely like these issues are obviously still happening today. And I feel like the conversation has moved forward a little bit, but like um, you know, we take like I said earlier we you know to quote paula abdul our queen like we take two steps forward you take one step back like opposites attract right so like mm -hmm. um from the gospel of abdul, from the yes. gospel of uh paula abdul straight up album cassette <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it it definitely feels like i mean it was definitely fun to play in that world because there is inherent comedy in like well we all know this isn't, this is taboo now. And then also it's still taboo now today. Cause you would think that it wouldn't have been, I mean, I guess in some circles, a lot of it wasn't taboo, but yeah, in the mainstream it is. Yeah. And I think it's a cool, um, I mean, you said it as flabbergasted as we all thought of, of it, like, oh my gosh, we're still having this conversation. And it's a reminder too, like the, what the show does, it's a reminder of like, hey y'all, <laughs> We still back here. We still back here. You know what I mean? Tough Even though we're not, we've advanced 50 years. Has mm -hmm. time really, have we evolved past this? And the answer is no, we haven't. And I mean, like, there's still so much that still needs to be addressed that we have not talked about. And I think, and I hope the show will open the conversation to the audience about sexuality, mm -hmm. about the freedom of press. Mm -hmm. about the things that we can and cannot do, about censoring bodies, whether that's individually or for the government. You know what I mean? Like, these are all important conversations uh, that are ha that should happen internationally speaking. So um, this show will point out like, oh yeah, we still have gaping holes in terms of progression. Like, I know we have advanced, but have we progressed? For sure. And you even noticed that with Joyce. And I kind of want you guys to talk a little bit about your relationship with her because she kind of thinks that she is the most liberal, open minded person. But she does underestimate kind of all of your characters and surprised with how much you guys can bring to the table. Can you kind of talk a little bit about your relationship with Joyce? Yeah, well, my character, um, Shelly and Joyce are sisters and they grew up in this world, but like, I think Shelly has been out living in the world a little bit and Joyce has kind of been in a like in a liberal bubble for a while and sort of singularly focused on this is what needs to happen. And, it, you know, this magazine has to come out with these articles and it has to happen this way. And so for her to see her world get cracked open and my character is a little more. I mean, Shelly is a little more like go with the flow, like you haven't had this opportunity, like take the money, like make the leap, take the risk, like how exciting from a Pasadena housewife point of view to be able to have a risk even to take, you know, um, to have that option. So I think, I think Shelly just points out like the way, the way of the world. And I know this is uncomfortable for you, but you know what, what choice do you have? You either don't ever make your magazine or you make it with a penis in the middle. Like, let's, let's go for it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. The, it's so interesting and, too. Cause like you would on paper, you would think Joyce is the more progressive sister, but mm -hmm. in, the, in the pilot, we see that Shelly actually has really progressive views and is mm -hmm. the one encouraging Joyce to make that move. So that that's really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And we've and we've we were set up like our mother set these standards where we're not going to talk about this kind of stuff with each other. It's taboo to even speak about it as sisters, but individually, like we've gone on these little journeys and I've got my ear to the ground and I'm like listening, you know? Yeah. Obviously, since the show is about an exotic uh, magazine, there is a ton of nudity on the show. However, yeah. even just as I don't a think viewer, I, I don't think I've noticed. No, I don't. <laughs> as a viewer watching it, I feel like it's actually not very sexual, and it doesn't see the meaning, so you kind of get used to it quickly. How was it like oh, yeah. to film? In fact. Yeah, I mean, well, in a grounded way, this is just part of the job, you know, Absolutely. like. So you're at a magazine and, and I felt like they treated it with, I, I felt like they were, they treated the actors who were brave enough to like 
go for it. Like we had a crew of bottom dollar models that were just the best. And oh, they were amazing. Yeah. Every week they were in a different, insane, like sexy outfit, but like, like in, in this world that makes sense. And it wasn't, it was never like gratuitous or, Oh, you know, it was always came from a place of, of this is how it would really, really be. And, um, and so I, I felt like that made it feel necessary. You know what I mean? Whereas like, sometimes you'll be watching something and they'll be like, why did they have to just show us that shot? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We did not need that. We didn't need like a close up of that woman's nipple, but like in, in this show, it feels, it feels earned and also like authentic. Yeah. And that they have the agency to make that choice. Absolutely. I think totally. that's important. It's like they have the agency. They're still, they're a part of the family. You know what I mean? They are still part of the bottom dollar crew production. They're not mm -hmm. being like preyed upon. They're not being objectified at all. It's their choice to walk around set wearing no clothes, you know, and they're very comfortable living that life. I think a big, a big problem that people have is this idea that like just because you're nude it's like oh this tab oh you shouldn't but you're not asking like who has the agency here you know what i mean i think sexuality can be very powerful you know and it's scary to for people to harness that sort of power yeah. i'll also add to that like you know we do see a lot of uh boobies and peepees on the show but <laughs> Also, that's not <laughs> that's not what the show is really about, you know. Yeah, the show is yeah, about yeah. the interaction between these people that work together. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's it's and and also it's not like smut necessarily. It's not like pornographic. The, the thing that I love about my character Richie is that I'm the photographer, but like I don't take these like seedy sort of like gross pictures they're all they all feel sort of artistic in a way mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. so you're taking the the nudity this taboo thing of like nudity the male body the naked male body and elevating in a way that is really really artistic so it takes away from all that spud and smut and all that like um sort of seedy i, I would say like low brow sort of predatory gaze and making it a point to be like no we're we're looking at through the female gaze. Let's add yeah. some intelligence to it. Let's add mm -hmm. some artistry to it. Let's elevate it. And I think that's, first of all, I think that's what Joyce brings to the table at Bottom Dollar. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting that uh, people will make the connotation of like, just because there's a penis, that means that it's bad. It's like, well, no, look behind the penis and you'll see <laughs> that there's a full beautiful family <laughs> dynamic in the workplace. And mm -hmm. that's what the show's really about. Yes, thank you so much. And thanks for taking out the time to talk to me and fingers crossed for a season two. Thank Yay! you. Yay, good. Thank you so much for having us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anna.